Ford's Cougar has sharpened up its act in third generation guys, evolving into a much more credible upper mid-sized SUV contender. There's sharper styling, a much nicer cabin, and extra technology that segment buyers will like. Plus, this blue oval brand crossover still offers class-leading drive dynamics. And across the range, more frugal conventional engines share showroom space with a range of electrified ones. There's a choice of mild hybrid, self-charging hybrid, and PHEV plug-in hybrid options. In short, if you're shopping in this sector, this is still a car you very much need to consider. For a best-selling volume brand, it's taken Ford a remarkably long time to come up with a really class competitive range of SUVs. For an awfully long period, the only credible crossover nameplate that the company offered was this one, the mid-sized Cougar model. And today, we're going to tell you everything you need to know about the third generation version. The original Cougar, the first C394 series model, dates back to 2008 and it was one of the first affordable family SUVs to properly prioritise a decent driving experience. Rivals were beginning to copy that approach by the time the second generation C520 series version was launched and then significantly updated in 2017 prior to the launch of this Mark III model in early 2020. Throughout that period, the Cougar sustained Ford's SUV sales as other less well-developed crossovers from the Blue Oval brand faltered, mainly because they were primarily developed for markets outside Europe. The rather half-baked, smaller Echo Sport, for example, or the larger, clunkier Ford Edge. Today, though, a Ford showroom is a much more inviting place for crossover customers. This Cougar sits just above another recently launched Blue Oval brand SUV that we've strongly praised, the Puma. And it's a huge step forward from its Mark II predecessor in terms of engine technology, media connectivity and overall sophistication. Both mild hybrid and, as in this case, plug-in hybrid powertrains are available. Plus, this car is significantly bigger than the design it replaces, recognising its new role as Ford's flagship SUV. But one thing we're told hasn't changed. Ford promises us that this Cougar will be better to drive than ever. A lot of this thanks to an all-new C2 platform shared with the Focus hatch. Now, if the Cougar can deliver on that brief, yet up its game elsewhere, rivals will have much to fear. So let's put this car to the test. For years, a Ford Cougar was the mid-sized SUV crossover that other brands turned to if they were developing a car in this class and they wanted it to be good to drive. The Mark I model was out on its own in this respect, but when in 2013 Ford had to make the second generation version slightly larger and heavier, they diluted a few of that original car's virtues in a manner that wasn't helped by the additional need to incorporate electric power steering. This Mark III design had to do better, which was quite a brief for the Ford engineers because it also had to be bigger and to carry around quite a bit more weighty equipment. Still, you're always going to have an easier job producing exemplary drive dynamics if your SUV is broadly based on the market's best handling family hatch, in this case Ford's fourth generation Focus. Now this Cougar shares that car's stiffer, more sophisticated C2 platform and it has the advantage that unlike the Focus, humbler versions of it don't have to be saddled with a relatively crude torsion beam rear suspension setup. All Cougars get the proper all-round independent suspension arrangement uh, that only features on the most powerful of the Focuses. On top of that, the steering column is twice as stiff as that on the previous Mark II Cougar. And compared to that old car, there's a 10% gain in torsional stiffness, uh, a 44mm wider track and a 10mm lower centre of gravity. It all sounds quite promising. And so it proves on the road this car feels like what it is, a slightly larger, slightly taller version of the Focus. The steering isn't perfect in terms of feedback, but it's quick and accurate and it's much better than the previous model's electrified rack. 
uh, push on through the bends and this Ford delivers the kind of confidence that you simply wouldn't normally expect a contender in this class to be able to give. Uh, the handling is further assisted by various finely tuned aspects of electronic assistance, things like torque steer compensation, a subtle stability control system and torque vectoring control to get the power down through the bends. Uh, it all combines to create a car that really can reward at the wheel, even in its most affordable forms, perhaps especially in its most affordable forms actually, and we'll get to that in a minute. Overall, there's nothing else in this segment that really feels quite the same. Get out in one of these and then go and drive a rival Volkswagen Tiguan or a Peugeot 3008 and we think you'll find that this, uh, well, it makes those contenders feel dull by comparison. The ride is better than before too and that's thanks to an extra inch of suspension travel, taller profile tyres and a new isolated rear subframe. Now we should get on to engines because quite a lot's changed beneath the bonnet this time around. Uh, most of the hype surrounding the power plants available uh, with this car have to do with its switch to some degree of electrification. But you don't get any of that from the 1.5 litre focus derived units borrowed for the bottom of the range. Uh, there's a three cylinder EcoBoost petrol power plant that's only offered with manual transmission and available with 120 or 150 PS and a four cylinder Eco Blue diesel available with either a six speed manual or an eight speed automatic gearbox and offered with 120 PS. The two 120 PS engines get to 62 in just over 11 and a half seconds on the way to a top speed of just over 110 miles an hour. The 150 PS EcoBoost petrol unit improves that to a 62 miles an hour sprint in 9.7 seconds en route to 121 miles an hour, but it has 25% less pulling power through the gears than the 1.5 litre diesel, so choose carefully or stretch to one of the electrified engines that Ford really wants you to try with this car. There are several, although all of them are combustion based. Full battery powered BEVs exist in the small and large SUV segments, but at the time of this test, not in this Cougars sector for mid-sized volume brand crossover models. For the time being, Ford has its full electric Mustang Mach-E to deal with BEV market demand in this class as it develops. Every other current form of electrification is covered off here though, mild hybrid, self-charging full hybrid and PHEV plug-in hybrid. Take your pick. The mild hybrid option ought to be the most popular, a 2 litre Eco Blue MHEV diesel with 150 PS, uh, though that was a proposition slightly hobbled at the time of this test by Ford's inability to offer it with either automatic transmission or four wheel drive. Uh, with this form of electrification the car can never run independently um, away from combustion power, but there's a bit of extra electrical boost for acceleration and start stop functionality. Uh, that's thanks to the addition to this power plant of a beefed up starter generator driven by a belt at the front of the engine. Now this stores the energy harvested when you brake or decelerate in a tiny 48 volt lithium ion battery secreted at the back of the car. Now the way this extra boost is delivered is usually pretty seamless but there are times when you might notice it. Uh, there's less of that little momentary hesitation that you sometimes get with conventional turbo engines when they're pulling away from rest and the engine cuts out a little earlier when you're coasting to a stop. It doesn't make a massive difference to the overall performance though. Uh, 62 miles an hour from rest takes 9.7 seconds on the way to 121 miles an hour. Now we just mentioned this MHEV unit's lack of automatic transmission and all-wheel drive. Customers wanting both of those things with diesel power are offered a conventional version of this 2.0-litre EcoBlue unit that comes only with all-wheel drive and an 8-speed automatic gearbox and has its power output boosted to 190 PS to compensate for the extra weight of those two features. Uh, with this variant, 62 from rest occupies 8.7 seconds en route to a maximum speed of 129 miles now. This would be the Cougar derivative you would choose if you were serious about towing because it offers easily the weightiest towing capacity in the range, 2.1 tonnes. That's 200 kilos more than the MHEV variant can offer. 
Your other route into 4x4 traction in a Cougar is to opt for the self-charging HEV full hybrid petrol model, which uses a 2.5 litre normally aspirated Duratec engine borrowed from the US market Ford Escape version of this car. Uh, there is also a front-driven Cougar HEV hybrid variant too, if you want that. Uh, with HEV, uh, this car can run independently of the engine on battery power. Ford says electrical propulsion is actually available at speeds as high as 85 miles an hour. More commonly though, this system works with a Prius style arrangement whereby the electric motor cuts in and out to assist the combustion power plant as and when it's required. Now in town that tends to happen rather often. With the Cougar HEV Hybrid, the Duratec petrol unit is mated to an electric motor, or in the case of the all-wheel drive variant, a pair of electric motors powered by a 1.1 kilowatt hour lithium-ion battery that sits at the back of the car, with the front wheels driven via a power split CVT belt-driven six-speed automatic transmission. Uh, the engine and the electrified combustion make 200 PS in total. Uh, that auto box decides at any given time whether power should come from the engine, the electric motor, uh, both at once or neither. Plus it includes an extra L setting that forces the engine to rev harder and it's intended to help control your speed in tricky downhill conditions. Which is all well and good uh, until you're on tarmac and you want to push on a bit. At that point the relatively slothful rubber band style response of the CVT belt driven auto transmission becomes a fraction tiresome. Uh, the impression is of a tendency for the engine not to feel terribly interested in what your right foot's asking from it. And that's also the case with the Toyota and Lexus hybrid products that use the same style of CVT box. Some of the same comments apply to the top BHEV plug-in hybrid Cougar variant that we've chosen to try for this test. Unlike the HEV variant and this car's most obvious PSA group, plug-in crossover rivals, it can't be had with all-wheel drive. Uh, this plug-in Cougar does feature the same Duratec 2.5 litre normally aspirated engine as its HEV showroom stablemate though, which makes its technical CV very different from the downsized turbocharged petrol units that rival PHEV crossover models use. Uh, Ford reckons that this Duratec engine's adoption of efficient Atkinson cycle technology, which reduces cylinder pressure and friction, compensates for the lack of a turbo. And the fuel and the CO2 figures do seem to bear that out. Where you do lose out a bit with the lack of a turbo is performance though. The Cougar PHEV figures uh, rest to 62 in 9.2 seconds en route to 125 miles an hour. They're significantly slower than those of direct competitors. Uh, for reference, Ford says that it's possible to drive it up to 85 miles an hour on battery power alone, although we're not quite sure why you'd ever want to do that. What you might occasionally need to do though in your Cougar PHEV is push on a bit through the bends uh, if you find yourself running a bit late. At which point if you do happen to have previously tested a rather more conventional Cougar variant, you might notice that the nimble handling that we referred to earlier is inevitably rather blunted by the extra weight that this PHEV model has to carry around. It's nearly 250 kilos heavier than a base diesel auto version, for example. It's still vastly better though than direct rivals. Jumped from, say, a Mitsubishi Outlander PHEV into one of these, and we think that you'll find this Ford's handling to be a revelation. Rival brands like that, though, do have much more experience than Ford in engineering EV technology, which shows in a few areas of this Cougar PHEV's drive dynamics. Uh, the slightly abrupt way that the car steps off from rest, for example, and the slightly grabby feeling that you get from the brakes. Uh, they lack progression when they switch from energy regeneration to conventional stopping duties. Uh, it might also be an issue for sun buyers uh, that this PHEV derivative can only tow up to 1.2 tonnes. This plug-in Cougar's hybrid powertrain obviously works with a much larger lithium-ion battery than that of the HEV model. Rated at 14.4 uh, kilowatt hours in size, it's actually a little bigger than the batteries used in direct rivals too. Uh, Mitsubishi Outlander has a 13.8 kilowatt hour battery, while the Vauxhall, Peugeot and Citroen hybrids in this class use one rated at 13.2 kilowatt hours, which is why this Ford can usefully improve on the all-electric driving 
range that those cars can offer is WLTP rated at 35 miles, seven miles more than the Mitsubishi, for example. In this test, we found that the 25 to 28 mile range expectation, that's probably more realistic for this Ford, but it's still better than obvious rivals. In those cars, we've often struggled to go too far beyond the 20 mile mark. Anyway, to maximize the range that you do have, there's the opportunity to boost brake regeneration energy harvesting by pressing the L button that we mentioned earlier. It's in the center of this circular gear controller. Plus, you'll need to keep an eye on the instrument cluster power gauge and on the many and varied provided drive efficiency readouts that you can select or monitor at your leisure on your smartphone via the provided Ford Pass app. Most importantly though, you'll have to get your head around all the drive modes. Primarily in the case of this PHEV model, these are accessed with a press of the EV button down between the seats. Now this reveals four different settings for the electric drivetrain. EV Now focuses the drivetrain on all electric output. EV Charge rather inefficiently tops up the battery using the engine. And EV Later holds onto the current state of charge that you have so you can use it for the urban driving that you might want to do later in your trip. Most of the time though you'll simply leave the car in EV Auto where the clever electronics uh, determine the most efficient use of engine and battery power. Drive modes are something that all Cougar buyers get to play with, whatever kind of powertrain they've chosen. Uh, every version of this car features five selectable settings. The main ones are normal, eco and sport, but you can also select a slippery mode for icy mornings and a further deep snow and sand setting for use uh, should you want to take your Cougar off the beaten track. Even front-driven Cougar variants like this one get that final gnarly surface mode, but don't be tempted to go too uh, far and get too ambitious off-piste uh, with this Ford, especially if your chosen variant lacks all-wheel drive. It simply isn't built for that kind of thing, nor is there the ground clearance that's necessary for really rough tracks. Although grade assist, a hill descent control system, is included to ease you down slippery slopes. Anyway, all the drive modes that I've uh, just mentioned adjust throttle response, steering weight, and traction control. Plus, if you have a Cougar with an automatic gearbox, those same drive settings will adjust the gear shift timings too. That eight-speed transmission, by the way, features Ford's clever adaptive shift scheduling, uh, which assesses individual driving styles to optimize gear shifting and can identify gradients and hard cornering. Uh, there's also adaptive shift quality control, which is why the transition between ratios with that auto box feels so seamless. You'll need an auto box to be fitted if you're going to make the most of Ford's rather limited efforts at autonomous driving tech with this car. An optional adaptive cruise control setup will do most of the driving for you. When it's engaged at highway speeds, it'll keep you centered in your lane. And with the auto box fitted, it'll stop and start you off again uh, when you come across a tailback. A standard intelligent speed assist system will automatically regulate your speed to urban limits. And an improved optional Active Park Assist 2 system can take over steering, throttle and braking duties while automatically manoeuvring you to either parallel or perpendicular spaces. Other rivals can equal or better that level of tech, but uh, none of them drive quite like this car, which is why we think so many people will like it. Cougar buyers were ready for a change, for more emotional design, as Ford styling chief Amco Lienartz puts it. He characterizes this Mark III Cougar shape as being visually sleeker, lower and wider, and he reckons it'll make you feel excited just by looking at it. Well, we're not sure we go that far, but there's certainly a switch in visual emphasis here, away from the more rugged appearance of the previous Cougar to something a touch more elegant and bigger. This third generation car is 89 millimeters longer and 44 mils wider than its predecessor, but despite that, it's around 80 kilos lighter. So you can see why Ford's penmen feel quite pleased with themselves. 
They worked particularly hard on this more streamlined silhouette, hence the 4.5% CD aerodynamic improvement. And from here, a previous owner might note this 20 millimeter lower roof line and the fact that the car sits six mils lower to the ground too. In place of the previous version's sharply chiseled lines, uh, the flanks have smoothly curved concave surfacing. And there are a whole series of detail changes that you can't see, like the way that the door frames have been stiffened and given improved sealing, which reduces air leakage by 25%. And of course, the wheels can be larger to suit the current zeitgeist, uh, varying between 17 and 20 inches in size. We have the 19 inch machine finished alloys here. It all contributes to a slight but significant move up market away from the Qashqai crowd and towards slightly more quality orientated mid-sized volume brand SUVs like Volkswagen's Tiguan, Honda CRV and Mazda CX-5. That's the thinking behind this longer bonnet and the more flowing front fender. The final look of this nose section depends very much on the trim variant that you've chosen, with the grille and front quarter styling quite different as you move through the various spec options. With mid-range titanium spec, the grille gets silver strips and there are slim outer front fog lights. Move to an ST line variant like this one and those lower fog lights get this more aggressive bisected vented treatment. And there's a Ford Performance style grille with wavier elements and an all black finish. Top Vignale trim is different again with a chromed mesh grille and a distinctive tick style finish around the lower corner cutouts. Across the range, as is usual in this class, this seemingly obligatory lower front skid plate panel features. At the rear, a uh, reclined tailgate glass angle is a further nod to the switch away from the traditional boxy SUV silhouette. And of course, there are plenty of sporty touches, this roof spoiler, a rear diffuser and twin tailpipes. In short, it's all more crossover than SUV, which apparently is what you all want. Uh, what Ford wants, of course, is economies of scale in production, which is why 70% of the parts of this car are shared with its Focus family hatchback showroom stablemate, primarily the more sophisticated C2 platform, which delivers a 10% improvement in torsional stiffness. So the exterior has been upgraded. What about the cabin? Can it reflect Ford's desire for a small but subtle move up market? Now, given that the dash had to be carried over virtually unchanged from an ordinary Focus family hatch, that was a big ask. But Ford's uh, cabin design team have done their best to embellish it. As with the Puma, there's a TFT instrument cluster screen ahead of the driver that changes in theme according to the driving mode that you select. Now, we'll get to that. Um, quite a lot of tinsel has been added to upper spec variants to try to justify the uh, more exalted price positioning, uh, the carbon fiber look of the center dash trimming and the red stitching for the sport seats, uh, for the steering wheel and for the door cards of this ST line model, for example. Ultimately though, uh, the cabin architecture is what it is with hard and scratchy lower order plastics betraying its relatively humble origins. Still, in compensation, you sit satisfyingly high behind the wheel and it feels considerably more spacious up front here than the previous generation model. Ford says there's 43 millimeters more shoulder room and despite the lower exterior roof height, there's 13 mils more headroom too. Uh, the brand says instrument panel positioning has been optimized to increase this perception of space, uh, perhaps most notably with the so-called floating design of this prominent SYNC 3 center dash monitor. It is still a touch screen. We'd prefer a lower rotary controller like you get in a rival Mazda CX-5. And some of its processes, like choosing a DAB radio station, are still unnecessarily awkward, but this sync setup now gains a fresh new menu structure with colors that this time don't look as if they've been through the boil wash. And there are useful shortcut audio, phone, nav and mobile apps options at the bottom of the display here. Plus, of course, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto smartphone mirroring without the subscription charges that some of the premium brands like to levy for that feature. 
Now, most Cougar variants get a 10 speaker, 575 watt B&O premium sound system, and perhaps most significantly, there's a great deal of extra functionality thanks to the installation of an embedded Ford Pass Connect modem that provides Wi Fi, live traffic updates, and connectivity to an app that allows you to interact remotely with your car. Anything this display can't tell you will almost certainly be covered off by the 24-bit true color 12.3 inch instrument cluster screen that we mentioned, which is standard from ST line spec upwards. Lesser Cougars get a more conventional dial arrangement with a small 4.2 inch central screen expanded to 6.5 inches on the titanium spec PHEV variant. You'd ideally want this big 12.3 inch display though. It springs into life with fancy graphics, but unlike some other rival model virtual cockpit screens, it can't be specified to show full width navigation mapping. Uh, select one of the five available driving modes and it alerts your attention in a really eye-catching way with a digital speedo alongside the bespoke setting layout you've chosen. Otherwise, the display is based around a central area which can be configured in various customizable ways, flanked by two outer virtual dials, which initially look rather curious due to their absence of outer bezels. Uh, there's a speedo on the left, while on the right, uh, conventional models get a rev counter that's replaced on HEV and PHEV variants by a power gauge, which shows in kilowatts the uh, current output of either battery or engine. Between these two main gauges, you can prioritise readouts for audio, nav or phone info, or choose Select Screen, which allows you to choose display options from quite an extensive list, although we're not quite sure why Ford feels the need to restrict you to just seven choices. A click on this steering wheel button can scroll you through readouts for things like fuel economy, trip computer info, uh, tyre pressures and an eco behaviour option. Uh, if all of this represents information overload, you can also select a calm screen, at which point nothing at all will be shown between the gauges. What else? Uh, well, the seat bases are rather flat, which might be an issue on longer journeys, but you do get lumbar support for the front chairs as standard fit across the range. Uh, storage provision isn't perfect. The door bins are too small, um, as are their incorporated bottle holders, and they can only hold a 500ml bottle. And the glove box can't be called, although it is usefully big. Uh, there's not much else to grass about, though, in this regard. Uh, you get a deep bin ahead of the gear selector with a wireless charging mat. Uh, there's a 12-volt port 2 and twin USB sockets. There's another 12-volt port in this deep lidded box between the seats, which incorporates a lift-out tray. And there's a phone-shaped receptacle just in front, just behind these twin cup holders. Uh, there are ticket clips on the sun visors and you get netted storage in the passenger footwell too. And Ford hasn't forgotten an overhead compartment for your sunglasses. All round visibility is fine, but certainly not perfect. The front A pillars are fairly thick, which can occasionally obstruct your view at junctions and roundabouts. Uh, the rear pillars are also thick, so you'll make full use of the standard rear parking sensors when you're reversing. There is a very good surround view camera system with a remarkably clear picture, but you can only have that as part of the expensive optional driver's assistance pack. That pack throws in a head-up display, one of the largest in the segment, and special filters for the retractable polycarbonate screen mean that it can be read by users wearing polarised lenses. Right, let's look at rear passenger space and let's pause as we do to reference the neat but rather flimsy looking edge protectors which spring out as you open the doors and guard against car park panel dings. Now unfortunately you can only have these as part of a pricey optional safety pack. Now, this is now the largest of the top five best-selling medium-sized SUVs on the market in terms of both length and width. That's not enough to free up sufficient space for a third seating row back here. Ford isn't quite ready to address that market, but it does promise a significant improvement in rear seat room. Which is pretty much how it turns out. Uh, the more generous exterior dimensions mean there's now 36 millimeters more hip room and 35 millimeters more headroom. 
But if you've previously owned a Cougar, the big news here will be the addition by Ford of this sliding bench incorporated as a result of customer feedback. It slides over a range of 150 millimeters. It's 60-40 split, and with both sections fully back, rear occupants can enjoy a best-in-class legroom figure of 1,035 mils. These side squab-mounted levers allow seat backs to recline as well uh, for greater comfort on longer journeys. Even if the need for boot capacity means that you have to push this bench forward, recessed seat backs uh, still provide decent knee room. Uh, because of this usefully low central transmission tunnel, it's not too difficult to accommodate a third centrally seated adult if need be, although the middle part of this bench is slightly domed. And the tall side windows let in plenty of light. There's not quite as much classy door trimming as is provided in the front, although brushed plastic and in the case of this ST line model, red stitching around the door pills helps a bit. Uh, again, the door bins are tiny, but there is a center armrest with cup holders plus seat back pockets, twin center vents, Isofix charge seat fastenings and overhead coat hooks and reading lights they're provided too. You can also specify this useful central AC 230 volt, 150 watt, three pin plug socket. And if you pay the significant extra premium Ford wants for this twin panel glass panoramic roof, the interior can be flooded with light. Let's finish with a look out back. Uh, now you have to spend quite a lot to get this powered tailgate. Uh, now it can be gesture controlled, so it can be raised with a swipe of your foot below the bumper if you're approaching the car laden down with bags. But you don't really need this kind of technology because the hatch is fairly light. Uh, once the tailgate is raised, a very decently sized boot with a low loading lip is revealed. It's square in shape with little wheel arch intrusion. 475 litres in size with conventional variants, although that figure falls to 411 litres with this PHEV model. That's with the sliding rear bench pushed right back towards the rear like this. Slide it forward as far as it'll go and your capacity rises to as much as 645 litres or 581 with this plug-in version. In this PHEV variant, that's enough for six carry-on suitcases below the window line. That's less than you'd be able to get into a rival Mitsubishi Outlander PHEV. There's no conventional parcel shelf, just this fabric tonneau cover, which helpfully lifts out of the way when the tailgate's up. But it does feel a bit Heath Robinson, and it attaches to the inside of the tailgate via a couple of cheap clips. It will, though, be much easier to store than an ordinary parcel shelf when it's not in use, which is just as well because there really isn't very much space beneath the boot floor, uh, particularly if you pay extra, as you should, for the mini spare wheel that's fitted here. Uh, the cargo area is a fairly practical space with small recessed corner areas on the left and the right, plus there's a 12 volt socket and a bag hook on the left. And if you need more room, well, it's a bit disappointing that Ford hasn't given the rear seat back a useful 40-20-40 split, nor is there a ski hatch. Uh, you attract these seat backs using these rather flimsy uh, cargo sidewall catches, and when the seats eventually spring forward, they don't fold completely flat. Total capacity to the window line is rated at 1,534 litres or 1,481 in this PHEV model. Those figures fall to 1,478 litres and 1,423 litres respectively if you fitted the mini spare. The Cougar has been moved a little more upmarket this time around. From launch, pricing started from around £25,000 for bottom order petrol variants. Uh, the versions of this Cougar that will uh, actually be the ones that most people want, though, sell in the £28,000 to £35,000 bracket. It sounds pricey, doesn't it? But that is now fairly par for the course for an upper mid-sized SUV model of this sort. Uh, there are five trim levels, ZTEC, Titanium, ST-Line, uh, that's the most popular, ST-Line X, which is what we have here, and Top Vignette. If you want things like all-wheel drive and HEV or PHEV full hybrid tech, you'll need to avoid entry-level trim. 
Ford's been quick to talk about the various forms of hybrid technology it offers with this Mark III model and rather less keen to mention that the most affordable entry-level EcoBoost petrol and EcoBlue diesel engines don't get any of it. Now things kick off with the 1.5 litre EcoBoost petrol unit which in both its guises can only be had with manual transmission. In base 120 PS form this three-cylinder petrol power plant does struggle a bit to shift along nearly one 1.6 tonnes of Cougar, so you're going to probably need, uh, at the very least, to find the extra £600 or so that Ford wants for the perkier 150 PS version of that EcoBoost engine. Or find a few hundred pounds more for the 1.5 litre four-cylinder EcoBlue diesel, which has 120 PS and which can be ordered with eight-speed automatic transmission for about £1,500 more. The next stage up in the Cougar lineup sees variants that use a 2-litre EcoBlue diesel engine, and that can be had in two forms. Now, if you're happy with front-wheel drive and manual transmission, then you'll be offered the 150 PS MHEV version of it, uh, and that features the brand's latest mild hybrid tech. But at the time of this test, uh, that electrified power plant was somewhat limited in its appeal uh, by Ford's inability to offer it with automatic transmission. Uh, now you can't have that 2 litre MHEV diesel with all wheel drive either. Now to mollify potential buyers who are irritated by both those issues, Ford from launch uh, included in the range a 190 PS conventional non-mild hybrid version of the same engine in a Cougar model that features both 8 speed automatic transmission and all wheel drive traction. Uh, from a running cost point of view, it would have been ideal if Ford had used that 2-litre diesel as a base for its two available forms of full hybrid technology, but doing that wouldn't have been very politically correct these days, uh, so the brand has instead borrowed a 2.5-litre Duratec petrol unit from the US market version of this car, both for the self-charging HEV hybrid model, which offers 200 PS and which comes with a choice of front-wheel drive or all-wheel drive, and for the top plug-in hybrid PHEV Cougar that we're trying here, which offers 225 PS and comes only with front-wheel drive. Now, both models have to be had with a CVT automatic gearbox. You're going to need uh, well over £30,000 for the HEV variant and, of course, much more for the PHEV plug-in derivative. Uh, from launch, Cougar PHEV pricing sat in the £33,500 to £38,500 bracket which meant a premium of over £4,000 over the front-driven 2-litre mild hybrid diesel version of this car. So in other words, you've really got to want the plug-in hybrid tech. Even so, Ford expects this PHEV model to account for 26% of the Cougar range sales mix. Right, let's take uh, across the range Cougar pricing and consider the overall value proposition on offer here. And let's start with comparable Ford SUV orientated models. Now a bottom end Cougar petrol variant demands a price premium of around £3,000 over the next crossover model down in the blue oval brands range, the smaller Puma. Uh, a more comparable SUV orientated mid-sized Ford model though we think is the lifestyle orientated active version of the company's Focus Estate. Now a Focus Active has a little more ride height than a standard Focus and it has also various off-road orientated styling cues, although of course it's not a purpose designed SUV in the way that this Cougar is. Uh, in compensation though, a Focus Active Estate will offer you uh, rather more cargo room and it'll save you around £3,000 up front. If you're looking at the most expensive PHEV versions of this Cougar, then it's worth pointing out that for only a little more, you could get Ford's similarly sized full electric Mustang Mach-E model. But let's assume you're buying a typical mid-range Cougar derivative and you want to know how it stacks up price-wise against comparable segment rivals from other brands. Well, we've described this car elsewhere in this film as an upper mid-sized SUV. So, in other words, it's a little bigger and a little cleverer than conventional mid-sized SUVs. Now, these are the models that you'll know, uh, like the Nissan Qashqai, the Seat Attica, uh, the Kia Sportage, uh, also the Renault Kajar, the Skoda Karok, and the Hyundai Tucson. 
Now, all of these will be a little cheaper than this Ford because they're a little smaller. But let's compare apples with apples and pitch this Cougar price-wise against the upper mid-sized SUV rivals that are closest to it in size and technology. Now, comparable versions of most of the more direct competitors that we've looked at are anything between a few hundred pounds and around a thousand pounds more than this Cougar. And that depends on the engine and spec that you're looking at. Now, we're talking here of models like uh, Volkswagen's Tiguan, uh, Vauxhall's Grandland X, also Peugeot's 3008, Mazda's CX-5, uh, Citroen C5 Aircross and Honda's CRV. The self-charging Cougar HEV hybrid is aimed directly at two Japanese models in the segment, which use the same technology, Honda's CRV hybrid and Toyota's RAV4. And in the same way, this PHEV Cougar model also has a very specific group of rivals, and it looks good value against them. Uh, think in terms of a two to three thousand pounds saving against direct competitors like PHEV hybrid versions of Peugeot's 3008. Vauxhall's Grandland X, uh, Citroen C5 Aircross, and also the Mitsubishi Outlander PHEV and the Volkswagen Tiguan E-Hybrid. If having considered all that, you conclude it is some sort of Cougar that you really want, then you're gonna need to know just how generous Ford has been with the standard spec. So let's take a look at that right now. Uh, even base ZTEC variants are well equipped. They come complete with 17 inch alloy wheels, uh, front fog lamps, LED rear lights, uh, rear privacy glass, silver roof rails, power folding mirrors with puddle lights, uh, also a quick clear heated windscreen, all round parking sensors and a category one alarm. Also a very complete package of camera driven safety kit. Inside a ZTEC spec Cougar, you get sports seats, manual air conditioning, uh, leather trimmed steering wheel and gear knob, driver's seat lumbar support, a wireless charging pad, cruise control uh, with an adjustable speed limiter, a selectable driving mode system, a 4.2 inch TFT instrument cluster screen and second row sliding seats. Plus there's a very high standard of infotainment too, which you access via an eight inch SYNC 3 center dash infotainment screen. This includes a six speaker DAB audio system, Android Auto and Apple CarPlay smartphone mirroring, uh, navigation and the Ford Pass Connect embedded modem, which includes a three gigabyte Wi-Fi hotspot. For the first three months of ownership, uh, you'll also get a trial of Ford's live traffic information system too. All Cougar owners will also be offered use of the Ford Pass mobile app. Now this will enable you to use your smartphone to remotely lock or unlock the doors. And if you specify a variant with automatic transmission, uh, you'll also be able to remote start the car too. And that will enable you to pre-cool or pre-warm the cabin on a summer or winter's day so that it's absolutely perfect when you enter the car to start your journey. Uh, the Ford Pass app also includes a vehicle locator and that will help you to find your Cougar if you've gone and forgotten where you parked it and also a vehicle status feature for checking things like fuel and battery charge levels, alarm status, tyre pressures, oil life and more. Uh, so that's covered what you get with basic ZTEC spec. Most buyers, though, will want at least to go a step further up the range to titanium trim. And that gets you 18-inch machined alloy wheels, full LED headlamps, front LED fog lamps, auto headlamps and wipers, and keyless entry. Uh, inside, in a titanium spec uh, Cougar, you can expect sports seats with lumbar support, uh, cabin ambient lighting, dual-zone climate control, and a 10-speaker 500 75 watt BNO premium sound system. Ford thinks the most popular trim level though will be ST line, which is expected to account for 33% of the sales mix. Uh, this sportier variant adds a body styling kit, 18 inch rock metallic alloy wheels, sport suspension, black roof rails, and a large rear spoiler. Inside with an ST line variant, you get a flat bottom steering wheel, alloy pedals, a dark headliner, ST line floor mats, Sensico sport seats with red stitching, and a full digital 12.3 inch instrument cluster.
Uh, this ST-Line X trim adds 19-inch wheels, a panoramic roof, heated front seats, a 10-way adjustable driver's seat and a hands-free powered tailgate. We'd think hard before paying the significant amount that Ford wants for the top Vignale variants. Though the uh, beautiful stitched leather upholstery that you get with those derivatives certainly feels very upmarket. Uh, Vignale versions, uh, they're identifiable by their 19 inch luster nickel alloy wheels and their Vignale body styling kits. Uh, they share some ST Line X features, the hands-free powered tailgate, the heated front seats, and the 10-way adjustable driver's seat, for example. Uh, plus, of course, at this level in the range, you get the full digital 12.3-inch uh, instrument cluster. In addition, Vignale buyers get a whole range of luxury orientated features. So, as well as the hexagon quilted Windsor leather seats, there is a premium leather steering wheel and gear knob. Uh, there's memory functionality for the powered mirrors. There's bespoke door sill scuff plates and cabin mats. There's a bit of extra technology too, full LED quad projector headlights with glare-free tech, plus a head-up display, an active park assist system which uh, steers you into spaces, and with most power plants, an active noise cancellation setup which cancels out engine noise through countering sounds via the stereo speakers. Enough on standard spec, uh, let's say that you've decided on the Cougar trim level you want. Uh, are there some key options that you'll need to set aside some extra budget for? Well, quite possibly yes. Avoid entry-level trim and on a mainstream model, you can add in the Vignale variant's full LED quad projector glare-free headlamps uh, in a package which also includes a uh, head-up display. With the two volume trim levels, titanium and ST-Line, uh, you will need to pay extra for features like the hands-free powered tailgate here, the 10-way power adjustable driver's seat, and also the power opening panorama roof. With these two mainstream trim levels, your dealer will also offer you the optional winter pack and that includes heated front seats, a heated steering wheel and heated rear seats too. Uh, the last two of those features can be added at extra cost to an ST-Line X model and you can also add heated rear seats to Vignale trim too. Annoyingly, uh, buyers of the Volume ZTEC and Titanium variants can't optionally add in the signature cabin feature, that's Ford's 12.3 inch instrument cluster. What about aesthetics? Uh, well, with titanium and ST-Line trim, you can add larger 19-inch wheels, and with ST-Line X trim, you can upgrade to the huge 20-inch 5x2 spoke pearl grey machined alloy rims. Bear in mind that you're almost certainly going to have to pay extra for your choice of paint colour. Solid blazer blue is the only standard one. Appallingly, even solid frozen white costs £250 extra. There are various uh, premium metallic colours, plus a selection of nicer exclusive body shades too. Uh, we have got one of those here in fact, uh, triple coat lucid red. The Vignale variant gets its own colour palette and a couple of standard metallic hues, but even here uh, most of the shades available cost extra. Uh, if you want to improve the look and the feel of the cabin, well, your dealer will offer you a set of velour carpet mats. As for practical touches, well, bear in mind that across the range, you'll have to pay £100 extra for a mini spare wheel, although that isn't offered with the MHEV mild hybrid engine. If you're looking at this PHEV variant, bear in mind you'll need to allow some extra budget for the 7.4 kilowatt garage wall box, which Ford offers at extra cost. Across the Cougar range, uh, as you'd expect on an SUV, it's also possible to specify a retractable tow bar or simply a tow bar pre-equipped pack. Uh, we would also want the optional luggage compartment mat. Now that can be specified in reversible form and you can have a boot liner and also a stainless steel rear bumper load protector. You can also add in door sill protection foils, uh, rubber floor mats and an umbrella holder. Roof crossbars with roof rails will enable you to fit a roof carrier for bikes and a ski carrier to the roof too. And if you have pets, you can specify various for pets options. A pro dog crate for small breeds, 
a scratch guard to protect interior surfaces and a set of easy steps so that your arthritic Labrador can more easily gain entry. OK, enough with general spec and options. Let's move on now to take a look at this car's safety provision and decide whether there's any substance to Ford's claim that this car is as strong as any in its class in this regard. Now, perhaps the highlight here is that all Cougar models now come with autonomous emergency braking. Now, Ford calls its version of this system uh, pre-collision assist with autonomous emergency braking. Uh, now, as usual, with these kinds of setups, uh, uh, this one works as you drive to scan the road ahead for potential collision hazards and it has a particular focus on pedestrians. It even works at night too, um, so if something you might be just about to hit is detected then you'll be warned. If you don't respond to that warning or perhaps you aren't able to, then the brakes will automatically be applied and that's to decrease the severity of any resulting accident. Should you still manage to have a collision, a post-collision braking system automatically applies the brakes to try to help avoid the car spinning off and hitting something else. There's also a lane keeping alert system that warns you if you veer out of your lane and a lane keeping aid that will automatically steer you gently back to where you ought to be. And Ford provides an intelligent speed assist speed limiter. Now that can be programmed to automatically set itself whenever you enter a speed limited zone, not allowing you to exceed the legal figure. That way you should never get a speeding ticket ever again. In theory anyway, don't you just love technology? In addition, uh, the standard Ford Pass Connect embedded modem package. Now that includes an e-call emergency assist feature. Now that will automatically alert the emergency services if the airbags go off in an accident. What else? Uh, well, as you'd expect in this day and age, all models include ESP stability control, traction control and an ABS braking system with EBA, emergency brake assist for panic stops. There are also the usual twin front side and curtain airbags and a tyre pressure monitoring system. Avoid entry level ZTEC trim and you get a driver alert driver impairment monitor too, which monitors your driving reactions for drowsiness. If you want to go further, we'd recommend that you take a look at the optional driver's assistance pack, where the key feature is an adaptive cruise control setup, which not only automatically keeps you a safe distance from the car in front on the highway, but it also includes lane centering assist, and that will subtly apply steering correction to keep you in the center of your lane. On the auto diesel models, uh, this setup also includes a stop and go feature, which clicks in if you come across a tailback and automatically stops the car. And then if the traffic ahead moves off within three seconds, it restarts it again. Now, all of this is about the closest that this Cougar gets to autonomous driving tech. The driver assistance pack also includes a BLIS blind spot information system which works on the move to warn you if you're just about to dangerously pull out to overtake when there's a vehicle in your blind spot. And there's plenty else too. Traffic sign recognition, pictures, speed signs as you pass them and then displays them on the dash. And cross traffic alert warns you of oncoming vehicles when you're reversing out of a parking space. It's also worth knowing that with this uh, driver's assistance pack, Ford will additionally throw in front and rear view cameras, door edge guards that spring out to protect you against parking dings, and the active park assist system that we mentioned earlier. And that's there to automatically steer you into spaces. And there's more with the full set of safety features fitted. This Cougar can also include so-called intersection assist technology, which can automatically apply the brakes to avoid or mitigate the effects of an accident if the driver is turning across the path of oncoming traffic and the system determines an imminent collision. 
Uh, there's also local hazard information technology. Now that can inform drivers of a hazardous situation on the road ahead, even if the incident isn't visible due to a bend in the road or other vehicles. Uh, now notifications are delivered independent of the sat-nav and they're sourced from uh, local authorities, emergency services, and from driving data from other vehicles connected to what Ford calls the cloud. It's all very impressive, although we were a little disappointed to see that customers in our market can't have the useful wrong way alert feature which is fitted to Cougars in Germany. This uses a windscreen mounted camera and information from the car's navigation system to provide audible and visual warnings should you enter a no entry street or even worse pass more than one no entry sign on a motorway ramp. Overall though uh, what's provided here is a standard of safety provision on a completely different level to anything previous Cougar owners will have experienced. The Cougar has always been good to drive, what it's not always been is efficient to run, but Ford reckons that's changed courtesy of this third generation design's electrified powertrain lineup. Like every other brand, Ford is electrifying all its volume models as is necessary to avoid the stringent European emissions penalties that will shortly be coming into effect. But what exactly does electrification mean in this case? Well, as with its smaller Puma SUV, Ford liberally uses the word hybrid with a capital H to describe various versions of this Cougar. But three very different versions of this technology are employed here and it's important to know what you're getting. Now in case you haven't viewed our driving experience section, we'll briefly recap the options available to you if you are a Cougar buyer. The PHEV plug-in version we're driving today certainly is a hybrid in the proper sense in that it can be electrically powered independently from the engine, as can be the HEV self-charging hybrid variant which uses the same 2.5 litre petrol engine, but unlike the PHEV it can't be plugged in to create a really significant all-electric driving range. Now we'll come back to those two units in this section, but we're not going to start with them because it's far more likely that that if you've chosen a Cougar uh, with a hybrid engine, it'll be of a quite different sort. Ford expects a very large part of Cougar sales to be accounted for by its two litre diesel mild hybrid MHEV unit. The MHEV version of this car isn't a hybrid in the usual sense that a potential buyer would understand. It can't drive on electric power alone, nor can it be plugged in. Uh, this is instead one of those power plants that come lightly tinseled with a tiny lithium ion battery that just about justifies the electrified marketing spiel. Um, the way that mild hybrid tech works is pretty universal, but uh, just to reiterate it, in case you're not familiar with it, the uh, engine, in this case a 2 litre diesel unit, is embellished with a belt driven integrated starter generator, the BISG. This replaces the standard alternator and it enables the recovery and storage of energy that's uh, usually lost during braking and coasting to charge a tiny 48 volt lithium ion air cooled battery pack secreted beneath the cargo area floor. The BISG also acts as a motor integrating with the engine and using the stored energy it harvests to provide extra pulling power during normal driving and acceleration as well as running the vehicle's electrical and ciliaries. The belt driven integrated starter generator is also able to aid the power plant's stop start system in urban traffic, restarting the engine in approximately 300 milliseconds, and that's about the same time as you need to blink your eye. And the uh, belt driven integrated starter generator also enables the Cougar's auto start stop technology to operate in a wider range of scenarios for even greater fuel savings, including when you're coasting to a stop below 10 miles an hour, and even when the vehicle is in gear with the clutch pedal depressed. So you've had the science bit, what you'll want to know about is the difference it all makes. 
the WLTP figures see a Cougar 2 litre Eco Blue MHEV 150 PS diesel delivering 56.5 mpg on the combined cycle and 132 grams per kilometre of CO2, which translates into VED band H. As we'll see in a minute, those returns are almost identical to those you get with the conventional smaller 1.5 litre Eco Blue 120 PS diesel unit that you can have with this car as well, uh, which doesn't have the mild hybrid tech. So basically, you're getting more power power and torque without any penalty, which is nice, but uh, you can keep the Prius comparisons on hold. What's important though is that the MHEV tech really does make a difference and makes uh, this diesel Cougar just about the cleanest car in its class. Uh, to give you some class perspective, Arrival Mazda CX-5 2 litre uh, 150 PS diesel manual model without mild hybrid tech puts out 154 grams per kilometre which makes it about 25% dirtier and of course pricier to tax. It'd be nice here to be able to do a direct comparison with the non-electrified 2-litre EcoBlue diesel engine that Ford offers, the 190 PS unit, but that's not really possible because whereas the 2-litre EcoBlue diesel 150 PS MHEV unit comes only in front-driven manual form, the 2-litre EcoBlue diesel 190 PS power plant comes only in all-wheel drive automatic guys, which of course means that it carries around significantly more weight. That's reflected in stats that see the 190 PS diesel model managing 47.9 mpg on the combined cycle and emitting 155 grams per kilometre of CO2, which by the way is again significantly better than you get from a comparable Mazda CX-5. Aware that its electrified technology would carry significant price premium, uh, from the launch of this Mark III Cougar model, Ford also included in the range two further entry-level 1.5-litre engines that don't feature any kind of electrification at all. That's not to say that the brand hasn't worked on them quite a lot, though. Uh, the four-cylinder 1.5-litre EcoBlue 120 PS diesel features low-pressure exhaust gas recirculation, an integrated intake manifold for optimised engine breathing, a high pressure fuel injection system and low inertia turbocharging and as a result it's able to return a very class competitive showing 55.4 mpg and 134 grams per kilometer of co2 in manual form the three-cylinder 1.5-litre EcoBoost petrol unit isn't quite as class competitive and that's despite the inclusion of a cylinder deactivation system which disables one of the engine cylinders at light throttle loads. The 120 PS version of this base petrol unit manages 42.2 mpg and 152 grams per kilometre, while in 150 PS form this engine manages 42.8 mpg and 151 grams per kilometre. Both EcoBoost variants fall into VED band I. So let's finish our perusal of Cougar stats by getting back to those of the two proper hybrid variants that we mentioned at the beginning, uh, the pair of 2.5 litre Duratec petrol electrified models, the self-charging hybrid HEV and the top plug-in hybrid PHEV derivative that we're trying here. The engine in question uses what's called an Atkinson cycle format, which is extremely efficient. Uh, ready for another science bit? Well, here goes. In a regular engine, the intake valve always stays closed when the piston moves up on its compression stroke, creating pressure in the cylinder. In an Atkinson cycle engine, the valve stays open slightly longer. That means less pressure in the cylinder, so the piston doesn't have to work as hard to overcome friction, which in turn improves fuel efficiency. Uh, some of the gasoline vapor escapes back into the intake manifold through that open valve, but it's pulled back in the next time the valve opens, so nothing's wasted. Anyway, in Cougar HEV and PHEV models, that 2.5 litre Atkinson cycle engine is mated to an electric motor, uh, a generator, a lithium ion battery, and a power split CVT automatic transmission. With the HEV model, a Cougar that can be had with either front wheel drive or all wheel drive, the technology seems to make a decent difference, enabling a very creditable CO2 return for a heavy petrol powered mid sized SUV of 130 grams per kilometre. Expect a total driving range of around 550 miles from a full tank. The Cougar HEV can be used in pure electric mode, but only for extremely short distances. More typically, the electric charge simply chips in Prius style to help the engine as and when it's needed. 
With the PHEV variant, you're limited to front wheel drive, but you get the much bigger 14.4 kilowatt hour lithium ion battery, which facilitates the PHEV variant's 35 mile all electric driving range. Compare that with the 28 mile range that you get from the PHEV segment sales leader, Mitsubishi's rival Outlander PHEV. Uh, 35 mile range, Ford reckons, will cover a wider range of ordinary customer journeys, over 80% of typical trips, according to the brand. This extended electrified range in turn allows this plug-in hybrid Cougar, like every other PHEV model on the market, to quite legally manipulate the WLTP testing procedure, hence the fantasy combined cycle fuel figure of up to 201.7 mpg and the quoted CO2 return of 32 grams per kilometer that makes possible this plug-in variant's low 10% benefiting kind taxation rating. That's in year one, it's 11% in year two and 12% in year three. To give you some perspective on that, a conventional Cougar 1.5 liter Eco Blue diesel automatic sits in a lofty 36% banding. What about road tax? Uh, well, that'll be cheap too. The PHEV falls into VED band B. The fuel figure won't, of course, bear any actual relation to what you'll achieve in day-to-day -day driving reality. Uh, that probably won't be very much different to what you get from the comparable diesel variant. And obviously, if you neglect to charge the car up, you'll simply be driving a heavy petrol-powered SUV, in which case you'll be lucky to see around 35 miles per gallon in regular use. The return that you actually do get in this PHEV Cougar will depend not only on how you drive the car, but also on your mastery of the various settings for the electric drivetrain accessed via this EV button between the seats. Uh, EV now focuses the drivetrain on all electric output. EV charge, rather inefficiency, tops up the battery using the engine, and EV later holds on to the current state of charge so you can save it for urban driving that you might want to do later on in your trip. Most of the time though, you'll simply leave the car in EV Auto, where the clever electronics determine the most efficient use of engine and battery power. Now you can boost brake regeneration and therefore energy harvesting by activating this L setting down here on the rotary gear selector. And charging, well, as we mentioned earlier, a Cougar PHEV owner will need to get to grips with that too in order to make the sums add up. Uh, there's no quick charge capability from public rapid charges as there would be in a full EV. Uh, the charging port is on the same side as the fuel filler and the quickest you'll be able to recharge from empty is in 3.3 hours from the 7.4 kilowatt garage wall box that Ford offers at extra cost. Another thing a PHEV buyer would have to keep aside some cash for. A standard domestic three-pin plug will charge the car in around six hours. As a Cougar PHEV owner, you'll be able to manage your charging regime via the special section of the Ford Pass app. From this, you'll be able to use your smartphone to check on your car's range and state of charge. Plus, you'll be able to set charging times and levels, precondition the cabin climate prior to departure, and oversee trip and charge journey logs, which, amongst other things, will list the MPG figures attained. Whatever Cougar derivative you decide on, it's reasonable to wonder whether the quoted returns that we've given you in this section will really be achievable in real-world, everyday motoring. Well, fortunately, Ford's technology aids you here, uh, particularly if you opt for the HEV or PHEV full hybrid models. The instrument binnacle screen has various selectable readouts which will certainly help with drive efficiency. Uh, there's one for fuel economy and there's another eco behavior display and that offers percentage grades for the frugality of your driving in terms of acceleration, uh, deceleration and speed. If you're not doing too well with these school light -like scores, then there's an eco coach option and that will more proactively tutor you, uh, replaced on HEV and PHEV models by an EV coach screen, which uses a series of colored boxes to show you when power is being efficiently used and when regenerative braking is working to the optimum. The full hybrids also get an energy efficiency readout that shows estimated range uh, from the next 
full charge. A lot of the same tools can be accessed via the special My Driving section of the Ford Pass app we just mentioned. Now here, you can check on your driving efficiency and braking scores and catch up on the recent EV miles you've driven and the CO2 and fuel thereby saved. Uh, the app will even show you how many miles have been gained through proactive use of regenerative braking. Get all of this right and Ford reckons that a typical Cougar PHEV owner could reduce his or her fuel bills by up to 40 to 50 percent depending on charging and vehicle usage. Across the range, the standard drive mode system includes an eco setting which adjusts the throttle and engine settings to give the best economy possible. Uh, we've got reasonably close to these as part of this test, giving some credence to Ford's claim that with this Mark III Cougar model, across the board fuel costs have been reduced by between 16 and 29%. All of this has been aided by the significant weight reductions that the brand has achieved as part of the design of this third generation model. The company says that this Mark III Cougar is up to 80 kilos lighter than its predecessor, or at least conventional versions are anyway. Uh, this PHEV variant weighs in at a portly 1,844 kilos. Uh, perhaps mindful of that, Ford went the extra mile to achieve weight savings with this design wherever it could. Lightweight aluminium is now used for the bonnet, uh, the lower control arms and the differential housing. And the designers even went as far as hollowing out the shock absorber shafts, fitting lighter weight carpets, uh, downsizing the optional spare wheel to mini spare status and installing special lighter neodymium uh, speaker magnets. What else? Uh, well, we'll tell you about servicing, which on all engines is required every two years or 18,000 miles, whichever comes around first. Uh, two prepaid servicing plans are available, one that covers you for two years and two services, and another one that is transferable to future owners and which covers three years and three services. Uh, maintenance bookings, they can be done online through the MyFord portal. Now this is part of the Ford Blue Service Scheme, which wraps up all of the care and maintenance of your car into one bundle, which includes a free 30-point e-check of vital parts and highlights any work required with red, amber and green traffic light warnings to rank items that need attention in order of importance. Uh, there is also the Ford Service app, which you can download onto your phone for free. It lets you uh, locate your nearest dealer and make a booking. As for the warranty, well, like all Fords, this one comes with a 36-month, 60,000-mile package that also includes one year of Europe-wide breakdown assistance. On top of that, there's an anti-corrosion guarantee for 12 years, and Ford also offers the chance to extend this cover uh, to either four years and 80,000 miles, or five years and 100,000 miles. On to insurance, uh, 1.5 litre EcoBoost 120 PS petrol variant is rated at group 13, 14 or 15E, depending on trim. The 1.5 litre Eco Blue 120 PS diesel is rated at group 11 to 13. For the 2 litre 150 PS MHEV mild hybrid diesel, it's group 16 to 18. For the 2 litre 190 PS diesel all wheel drive model, it's groups 20 or 21. For this PHEV plug-in hybrid, it's groups 18 to 20. And finally, let's consider the question of residual values. Uh, this area has never been a Cougar strength, but experts predict that this Mark III model will perform much better than its predecessor. To be specific, after a typical three-year, 27,000-mile period, a typical ST-line spec PHEV Cougar should still be worth £16,735, or nearly 47% of what you originally paid for it, which, if achieved, will be a significant improvement on anything that the previous generation version of this car was able to manage. Having in recent years at last got serious about SUVs, Ford has also got serious about this Cougar, as it needed to. The Mark I model was cramped inside, and the subsequent second generation version had, by the end of its production run, fallen behind the best of its rivals in terms of ultimate diesel efficiency, media connectivity, safety spec, and visual pizzazz. All that has been put right here. The Cougar certainly required wider appeal if it was to expand its market share and push itself up market. And this third generation redesign has provided just that. 
Other crossovers still make more of a style statement in this class, but correctly specified, this Ford now has considerably greater showroom appeal. Freshly added features like the digital instrument cluster and a sliding rear bench will certainly help here. This car isn't perfect, of course. Uh, the cabin, although it's much improved, still doesn't have quite the quality you'll find in some rivals. And some elements of the way the drive dynamics work in this PHEV model, the slightly sharp start-off demeanour and the little grabbiness with the brakes, uh, betray Ford's comparative lack of experience with EV technology. Where Ford's experience does stand this car in good stead is when it comes to the ride and handling balance that's been achieved here. Uh, like its smaller Puma showroom stablemate, this Cougar is a class leader in that regard. Choose to test drive this weightier PHEV version and you won't necessarily feel that, but take it from us, the lesser, more conventional Cougar models can make comparable upper mid-sized volume brand SUV rivals feel somewhat dull and derivative to drive. Now, if that matters to you, then this Ford has to rate highly on your wish list if you're shopping for this kind of car. In summary then, it's clear that the blue oval brand now means business when it comes to this class of SUV. And if you doubt that, then you need to try this one.